Hey y'all, hey, y'all know me, dropping in to spread a little tea, and you know how we do it, so let's get right into it. <clears throat> They're like, yo, how long are you going to stay quiet? And I just, you know, I be, I be sparing people. Somebody wants to have full control of every single thing and they can't have control, it, it's just not going to be a, a easy transition, you know, especially when, you know, the, the, the um, other person is just used to it being one way or very controlling or still wanting the whole family dynamic and it's not there anymore. But I love my kids and it's gotten to the point that I, I have to put myself first because I'm either gonna end up in jail or worse because I'm dealing with someone who is just, whose anger management is just non-existent. When I first moved to Florida, I remember I, I got a two bedroom condo and the first time I had my kids come over there after my divorce and I started the whole, okay, visitation, we and having my kids for the days I was having them, I want to first start off by saying that my heart goes out to Safari because it's apparent that he's been suffering in silence for a long time, a very long time. And it's sad that we are up, we be in an uproar about men doing this to women. But then we see women doing it to men and we don't take it as serious as we would if it was a woman. This here is sad. You can tell that this man wanted to break down the moment he started speaking on this. This is very sad. And I figured it was, it's, it's always two parts to a story, but I knew it had to be something deeper. I knew it had to be something deeper because we all know Erica Mena has always been toxic, has always been out of control, has always gotten physical with people. We know this. We've seen this. This isn't something we heard. We've seen this. And before we get deeper into this video, what I what I want to say is everything that we are witnessing on this video is grounds for custody. There, I can't see not one judge viewing just this bit of this little bit of footage. And not seeing that there's a there's a really big problem. Kids first came over in my condo. It made me so depressed because I was like, yo, they just I felt like they were so confined and I didn't feel good about it. And I said, yo, I gotta get a house. I need a house. I can't have my kids running around in this condo. And, and, and hurting themselves and just, it just not being a, a fit to raise, you know, two children in a co-parenting setup. And I found my house. And I'm gonna just, I'm gonna be all the way blunt and straight up with it, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I got this house because of my kids. I got this house for my kids. Seeing my kids be here running around it's the best feeling, you know? You know, when you have children with somebody who, at the end of the day, it, it shouldn't even have happened because I should have just noticed certain things when it came to parenting. You know, when you, you're with someone for three years and they have a child and you probably saw the child three to four times because the child was put off to go live with somebody else. And, you know, you don't, you kind of look past it when you don't have kids or you're not thinking about that. I never even like was like, yo, why doesn't your son live here? 
And then when you finally get to have a conversation with the son and find out why, it's, it's crazy. You know, imagine speaking to a child who's of age and knows what's going on. He's 16 years old. And he says, if I ever had to live with my mother, I would kill myself. Wow. 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 I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't make that up, you know? And it's, it, it, it sucks that I got to, like, really just run this down because of this smear campaign and somebody who gets such a high on just talking about me and picking and choosing what kids you want to, you know, have on the forefront and get whatever extra attention you get off of it. You know, so I kind of just looked past certain things and thought that, you know, maybe I could help and make things better. But when you aren't with somebody and it doesn't work out and the two of you are just like in a weird space and everything is a fight, especially in front of the kids, like I'm not gonna subject myself to that. My kids have never ever seen me upset. My kids have never heard me yell. That's just not in me. But, you know, on the other hand, the other side. Safari is so hurt behind this. You can hear it in his voice. You can see it in his face. Erica needs to, she needs to be put in jail. She needs to be put in jail. Them kids need to be in a stable home. Can you guys imagine how traumatized them children are? This is horrible. This is sad. I mean, could you imagine these little bitty kids seeing their mother act like this and this is who they have to go home to? Can you imagine how she act when they do something she don't like? You can't convince me that she got self-control when it comes to her kids, but she got but she ain't got self-control when it comes to Safari. You cannot convince me of that. This is sad and something needs to be done about it. ASAP. Those kids deserve a safe environment. And she is definitely not that. When, when I have my kids and someone is pretty much trying to police and parent and like watch every single thing I'm doing and call, oh, who's there? Well, what's going on? It's just so unhealthy, so excessive to the point where it just creates a lot of issues. Hey, I would do it is either a police precinct or if the kids are so what this new setup is gonna be because I refuse to go to her house to pick up the kids. I refuse. I'm not. She, it's just too unstable, too unpredictable. And the only way I would do it is either a police precinct or if the kids are somewhere else and I'm picking them up from there. But everything is just done off of spite and being malicious intent on the other end. Me, I don't move like that. I don't live like that. You know, when people look at me, you know, when people look at me, I don't look like I'm carrying stress. I don't look like I'm losing weight. I don't look like, like I'm just harboring so much hate inside me that it physically begins to show. And I'm a father, I'm a grown ass man, when I have my kids in there with me, they're under my care. They don't have nothing to worry about. So I'm not gonna have anybody acting like they need to know every single thing going on. When I was filming Love and Hip Hop, 
Miami and I had my kids here calling, oh, where, where are the kids at? What are they doing? Oh, you better not be filming with the kids. Oh. First of all, I've, I've never filmed with the kids ever by myself on Love & Hip Hop. They're not a part of my storyline. That doesn't make sense to me. They're not, I'm not gonna be in the park pushing the kids, playing, oh yeah, oh, like of course they wanted to see me film with them, but you know, both parents have to sign off on that. And you know that wasn't happening. And um, you know, the last, the last instant of when we had a transfer with the kids, it was, she called me and said, hey, I'm in the area. I can save you a trip. I could come pick the kids up. And um, um, trip, I could come pick the kids up. And um, um, I, I'm tired and I don't want to do the drive. And it was like really like early in the morning or whatever. So I'm like, all right, cool. I let her in, lay down in the kids' room. One of the kids was in there. Next to the kids was laying with me in my room. And when she gets up, she's like, she wants to have a conversation with me. I'm like, okay. Let's talk. As soon as she starts talking, it's yelling, screaming, all of that. I said, yo, look, I'm not doing that. And if you can't talk to me normally in front of the kids where the kids don't realize that we're having a discussion about something that, that we're not agreeing on, then I'm not having it. Oh, I don't give a half, blah, 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 all this yelling, whatever. So I'm like, okay, forget it. Just, you know, you here, pick them up, you can leave. And in my face, all of that, blah, 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 and all that. So I'm like, all right, you don't want to leave. I call the cops. I'm on the phone with the cops. I'm telling them, hey, you know, before this escalates, I would like police presence here because I want her to leave. Filming me calling the cops. Okay, I'm calling the cops here filming me. You're the one with the anger management problem just going off. So break stuff up in the house, has the kids running over glass, breaking stuff up outside. After that, I just was like, you know what? If I can't pick up my kids in a place that is like a drop-off point or a police precinct, I'm not picking them up because I'm not going to her house ever again in life. My daughter, she has an iPad. I'm blocked on the iPad. My daughter's four years old. She doesn't know how to block people. She doesn't even know how to text. Um, childish, just like BS like that. So I'm like, okay, um, the next time I got my kids after that, oh, no, prior, before that, when um, I went and I was gonna get a restraining order, cause, you know, she's doing stuff like showing up in my crib, five o'clock in the morning, pulling out a ladder, hopping the fence. Oh my God, what is that? Oh my God, what is banging on my windows. My son's birthday party was like a month after that. No, like it was a while after that. And then when I went to the party, they said, hey, you want a restraining order, but um, you went to a party, she was there. So you, you must not be in that much fear. So I had to drop that case. And this is me having to have two different lawyers. So this is two separate lawyers, for, the, for, for one lawyer for that, then another lawyer for this whole family court thing. And next time I got them, it was for, you know, beginning of the summer. And I was like, yo, I'll keep the kids for the summer. Let me know. My mother and my sister's here. They love being around them. They want to be around them. That's the issue. I can't reach my daughter's iPad. Pickup situation isn't sorted out. So. Now, literally bringing a ladder to someone's house, jumping a fence is insane. Not only is she crazy, she needs she's she's sick and she needs some help. Erica need help and them kids does not need to be in her custody. I said it. This woman texts a naked picture of me to my mother and my sister because she wanted to let them know that 
oh, you're, you and your, your son, I'm pretty sure your son's not telling you what's really going on between us and all of this other nonsense. Okay. Me and you are still, you know, having a relationship and that's over with. Thank God that's over with. Like, you know, I, I prayed about that and, and, and there's absolutely nothing physical going on anymore. And kids love me. Mommy, she was missing you. She was looking for you. This breaks my heart to hear that baby crying not to go back to her mother's house. Those kids are traumatized. And I just want to thank Safari for coming forward, telling your story, because DV is not only... Um, a man being physical or mental with a woman. It's also uh, men out there who are being um, in DV situations at the hands of a woman. No need to feel sorry for me. Now, if you want to feel the embarrassment that I might be feeling because I'm a human, and if you're human, I'm sure, you know, you can kind of understand where I'm going with that then yeah, that's one thing, you know, I'm human. There's moments where we are embarrassed. Um, if anything, be embarrassed with me because shit, <laughs> look what I've been dealing with. And there's so much that honestly, the world doesn't even know. But anyway, back to the comment, I chose him. Do y'all forget I was chased for three years and I wasn't budging. Like, mofo had to go through my friends and my family just to get me to reply in a text, let alone give him any type of chance. No need was finally given. And behind closed doors, when I finally started to get this chance, this individual was actually doing this whole PR rant, claiming he wanted to be married and have kids. So I was seeing the outside actions he was projecting and then I was engaging in the chance I was giving and oh boy did he come hard so it kind of matched you know and I was like you know what anywho the chance was given and life took its course before you knew it he was popping the question and because this person went so hard it was like hard not to believe you know anywho this is another comment that I kind of have to address well you gave him a second baby okay let me get on that one so I absolutely have to speak on this whole you gave him a second baby thing well guys that's all the commentary I have for now as always thanks for watching I will talk to you shortly bye don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And hit the notification bell so you can be alerted every time I upload a video. Don't forget to support your black-owned businesses. Visit ours in the link below.